This is Thursday, January 19th, 2012. We are in Natick, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morris Institute Library's Continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan. Our cameraman is Dan McDermott of Natick Pegasus. We are privileged to have with us today Helene Behrens Ronchetti. Welcome, Helene. Thank you. May I ask where and when you were born? I was born in Essen, mm -hmm. and April 30th, 1934. And where is Essen? Essen is in a rural Rhine Valley. Mm -hmm. It's close to Cologne, but a half an hour away from Cologne. And that, um, what country? Germany. Germany. And uh, what town do you currently live? Natick. Okay. Your marital status? Married. Any children? Three. Any grandchildren? Eight. Any great-grandchildren? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I have two old enough that could, that could be. Okay, and where did you grow up? I grew up in homes from 1939 to 1943. Okay, now tell us a little bit about your parents. My mother and father were both deaf. My mother died when I was three years old. Mm -hmm. I don't remember her. I don't even have a picture of her. I had one, but mm -hmm. it got lost. And my father was also a tailor. And they both grew up in Essen. Mm -hmm. And they married in 1931. Okay. And, and did you have any uh, siblings, brothers or sisters? I have a twin sister. You have a twin sister. Yeah. And what's her name? Anna. Okay. Now, you were mentioning you and Anna were in homes. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us why you were sent to homes. My mother died in 1937, and mm -hmm. it was just my father. Mm -hmm. And we lived with our grandmother and not my aunt. And they came, the police, the Police commissioner came and told my grandfather, tell Willie, which was my father's name, mm -hmm. going to hiding, they're coming for him because he wouldn't work for crop ammunition. And they came, but he was gone. The monks took him in mm -hmm. and he hid in the bell tower all the war years. And they fed him and mm -hmm. took care of him. Now, being fairly young, uh, what was it like growing up overall? Overall, it was hell. Really? Mm -hmm. All I can say. From the time I was nine years, from the time I was eight and a half, mm -hmm. it was hell until I was 21. Okay. I'm going to show you. Tell us a little more about this gentleman. This is my foster father who was very abusive. Mm -hmm. No matter what, if you didn't move fast enough. You got hit with a broom or whatever he had handy. Mm -hmm. He was also sexually abusive. Really? And the first week I squealed. The mm -hmm. first week I was there. And I went in and I told my so-called foster mother what he tried to do. But I didn't stay still. I ran. Uh -huh. And I got slapped in the face for telling her. How old were you? I was still eight years old. Wow. I was a little girl. Okay, and if you could show um, our audience who this gentleman was. Now, of course, this is all this is taking place when Germany's preparing for war. Tell us a little bit about that. So, ready to war. That was 1942. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was, of course, in the Nazi party. Uh -huh. That's why he got us. So. And we were told we were orphans, which we weren't. Uh -huh. But we believed it. When you're that age, you believe things like that. And you were telling me before the interview some of the jobs that you did. Tell us a little bit more about that. From the first week we got there, he took me out into the pigsty. Mm -hmm. And he showed me how to clean the pigsty. I had to feed him. I had to stay up at night when the sow had babies, pig, little piglets, till three in the morning, getting up maybe at six to clean the stables again before I go to school. 
There were no baths to clean yourself. Uh -huh. It wasn't very much fun. And uh, I had to do everything. He also had bee, we had, he had 200 beehives. Mm -hmm. And I had to do, go in the bee house. And I could not wear anything. I got stung by the hundreds. So I'm not allergic to bees anymore. If you wore, if you wanted to wear something, he would get mad, he would hit you. Mm -hmm. It was just a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. But you did it because I was more afraid of him mm -hmm. than I was of the bees or the sows or anything else. They bit me in the leg. I wasn't afraid of them. I, I could scoot, that, scoot yeah. them away, but I couldn't mm -hmm. scoot him away. Mm -hmm. And uh, whatever happened to him? He died. Mm -hmm. He finally married. He, he, she died when she was 64, a year after I left there. Mm -hmm. She didn't have nobody to do the work anymore. But it also was a guest house, so yeah, we had 14 rooms to clean, a bath and breakfast. Mm -hmm. Clean their shoes early in the morning, so I had to, uh, just, just horrible. Yes, and during this all, all, you also were going to school? To school, yeah. And was school any better? I loved school, absolutely mm -hmm. loved it. There was nobody there to hit you. And I'm, a, I'm an easy learner. I pop, 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 pick up languages just like that. When I got mm -hmm. there, to me, the, the mountain kids were kind of stupid in plain English. Uh -huh. And they sort of got mad that I knew all the questions. My report card was always superior, 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 mm -hmm. except my handwriting. I write fast. Okay. And uh, they got a little jealous. The, oh. the, the kids, the boys. The kids, okay. They would chase you home from school till one day. I had enough. I was only this high, and some of the boys were tall boys. Like one of them was about six foot, and the other two were maybe five four, five six. Uh huh. They were all brothers, and I mm -hmm. couldn't take it anymore. I was only this high. I was maybe ten years old by then. Mm hmm. And I had it. I don't know where you get the strength when you're really, really upset. Mm hmm. I just tackled one after the other. Then their mother came out. <laughs> She said, leave my boys alone. I said, you want to get it too? <laughs> I was so angry. Uh -huh. I can still see it in front of me. We became friends after, you mm. know, after. But it was just a nightmare. But after that, they left me alone. And when mm -hmm. I went back to Germany, in, uh, my sister and I went back to the town, some of the girls said, oh, we were so afraid of your girls. And they called us the dancers was during fashion season, we would put on a little skit that we learned mm -hmm. in the a, in a, in a children's home. So mm -hmm. she says, oh, we were so afraid of you. And I said mm -hmm. to myself, afraid of me? My sister too. She said it every so often on the telephone. Remember when you said that? We were afraid of them. Oh my goodness. So tell us what Germany was like during the war years. During the war years, it was tough. You didn't have much to eat. Mm -hmm. You got, as a, per child, you've got 200 grams of butter. That's not very much. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we didn't get that. You got so much bread, of course, we didn't get that. Mm -hmm. You got a slice of bread in the morning, dry bread, to take to school, and that was it. Mm -hmm. Lunch, she would make milk soup with just flour thrown in there, and mm -hmm. we had that to eat. And supper, you, again, got maybe a... Uh, a potato, some fish, whatever, whatever they could scrounge up. Right. And when you killed a pig, that's the only time we, half the pig had to go to the government when you killed it, mm -hmm. and half the pig you could keep. He, he killed him. I, I, I ran. I, mean, I couldn't stand that squealing. My sister stood there, catch the blood and everything. I couldn't do it. I could do a lot of other things, but mm -hmm. I couldn't do that. Okay. And I understand you and your sister met. Adolf Hitler, so tell us a little oh, bit about that. On the 20th of April, 20th. we were the only twins in the town. Mm -hmm. And they said Adolf Hitler is coming, so they had a bouquet of roses. Mm -hmm. And they picked my sister and I to give him a bouquet of roses. Well, that was very exciting. He was the, the leader of the town, like, like meeting the president here. Mm -hmm. That was in 1943. And he was very nice. Mm -hmm. I can still see him patting my head. <laughs> my sister too. 
Now, uh, let's uh, switch pictures here. This is... That's uh, the town. That is the, the That's town. That's the town, yeah. You can just show that. That's part of the town. And those are the Alps in the background? Those are the Alps in the background, yeah. But when I looked out of my bedroom window, I show you where my bedroom window was. Okay. Yeah, let's see. This arm doesn't move that far. Huh? This is the house. That's the house. That's, that part was a guest house. And over here, it starts uh, uh -huh. the, the barn and everything else. Right. And my bedroom window was right here. Mm -hmm. So when I looked out, we were surrounded by mountains, mm -hmm. as you can see in some of the color pictures. Okay. And you can see the, some of the color pictures. Now, this was this my was twin sister. Your twin sister. And when was that taken? That was taken last year when she was here. Oh, nice. That's the Washington uh -huh. uh, house, uh, the hotel, the Washington Hotel. Oh, okay. And is uh, who's that with her? That's me. That is you. That's me. You can see how thin my hair is. Ah. That's why I always wore mm -hmm. a hat. Okay. And what, uh, what's your twin sister doing these days? She's married. She's, she married a vice president of a company. She did very well. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah. We both did well. Okay, let's get back to Germany in the war years. And you were mentioning bombings before mm -hmm. the interview. That's why we got sent out of Essen. Mm -hmm. That We had a direct hit. Whenever we hit the, it heard the air in siren, it sounds like the fire siren, the police siren. Mm -hmm. We had to go down in the basement. And there were 24 of us down there. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't get us up. It was a big building. Everything was on top of us. Right. And the water pipes burst. Wow. And that was in the spring. It was That water was so cold. Mm -hmm. There were three of us left when they got us out. There was that much water, that much air left to breathe. We were little. We could climb up the, right. the, 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 uh, the boxes and stuff they mm -hmm. had down there. And one woman, one other woman, survived. That was it. And everyone else drowned? And when was this? Hmm? Oh, what, what year was this? That was in, before they send us to Wachtendonk, let's see, that was in 1942 also. 1942. Unbelievable. And th then tell us what happened after the bombing. After the bombing, they took us and sent us to the Dutch border, mm -hmm. Wachtendonk. And that was also a, a cloister by nuns. But there was one a very nasty one. There were in the, in the bedrooms. There were maybe fifty beds in there. Mm -hmm. And in the morning, we all had to line up. She would check our underpants. She would check our fingernails. Mm -hmm. And my sister chewed her nails. She would hide under one the, oh, under girl. one of the beds. She was smarter than I was in that mm -hmm. respect. Okay. But if you chewed your fingernails, I said, "Oh my God, you got it!" She set up two girls hold you by the legs, two girls by the hands, and then made a bamboo stick, you got it. I got a couple of times. Really? <laughs> so, um, aside from the nasty superior, uh, tell it what was like, uh, life like in Holland? It, it was, it was in, it was still in Germany, it was on a oh, Dutch yeah, so, border, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Dutch border. And uh, it was good. We got good food. They had big, big farms. We had to go out and uh, pick up uh, the, the corn, the, the, mm -hmm. thing, and the potatoes and things like that. And we went blueberry picking. Mm -hmm. it, was, that, it was nice there, other than this. Sister Maria Secondina, I never forgot her name. Mm -hmm. If I saw her today, I don't know what I would do to her. <laughs> <laughs> and so from there, mm -hmm. we got bombed there too, but mm -hmm. at the cloister didn't get bombed. So they decided to t take all the kids and bring them in the Alps. Mm -hmm. And just, we were in that town, there were eight of us. When the war was over, they all went home. And my sister and I said, why aren't we going home? Oh, you're orphans. You have nobody. You got to thank God that we took you in. Oh, this is the same gentleman? Her and, her and him both. She was, she was even worse than him. Wow. <laughs> she came after you with a knife and an axe, no matter what, whatever was handy. Mm. Sometimes my sister saved my life. She goes, don't go out. She's standing in front of the door with an axe. So you know how children are. I would uh -huh. go out the back door and I come around the house. And I look, I look in this door here, over uh -huh. here, and I say, ha, 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 didn't get me. <laughs> and was this that's the her, yeah. that's the foster mother, if you could show that, please. 
you don't see that much of her. She's a, uh -huh. it's a side view, but she yeah, but you've, see, you've seen enough of her. <laughs> I've seen enough of her. Yeah. I have some pictures where she's in front, but I really don't don't mm -hmm. want to see her. Uh, okay, so um, aside from the bombings, what kind of uh, how did you get your news about the war? We got that. It's a funny thing. We got we got we were in the nurse in a nursing home. Yeah, in the uh. children's home from 1939 on, mm -hmm. and we didn't know about the war until 1940. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when the Russians came into the war, I remember saying, what the heck are they going to do, shoot, use potatoes to shoot? <laughs> because you heard all these things as a child, You're right. but you know, you were indoctrinated in all of that. Mm -hmm. And I still remember saying that, we were all sitting in the, that was uh, sitting in Essen. We all sat there and said, oh, what, what are we going to use to fight the Americans, yet? The, I mean the, the Germans, potatoes? Mm -hmm. But as a kid, you have a different outlook. Mm -hmm. What were you told about the, the other allies? Well, they were all barbarians. That's mm -hmm. exactly what we were told. And when we, when they, we were first invaded by the French, mm -hmm. we were scared to death. When you, when you were a little girl, you were scared to mm -hmm. death. We were hidden in the bedrooms. But then they came in the house. They weren't too bad. They were Moroccans, a lot of them. That is incredible because um, a very recent interview, I interviewed a woman who grew up in Italy during the war, mm -hmm. and she had an encounter with Moroccan soldiers. So uh, she said that oh, they were very were, nice. <laughs> those were the fr they were nice, but if you didn't watch it, you, you know, you mm -hmm. would have gotten raped. I remember the one guy coming in, and my foster mother, mm -hmm. she, she, the guy gave her a box of chocolates for, for sex. She said, no, 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 you keep your chocolate. Mm -hmm. So he didn't, didn't do that. But i never forget it, he called it Coca-Cola. <laughs> he, he didn't call it chocolate, mm -hmm. Coca-Cola. <laughs> and were you still going to school during all this time? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The teacher, well, all the men were, uh, on the front, mm -hmm. and he had taken a teacher out of retirement, and she was a little loose. The church was right across from the school, so she would go over, get the holy water kettle, and she got my sacred him now and the swatches and the sonas and the silent geysers. I bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. We got the water squirted all over us. <laughs> in school. It was a one room schoolhouse. Right. It was from grade one to grade eight in there. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine it was. Okay. So the French were now in Essen? No, in the, in, uh, in the Alps. Oh, back that in was, the Alps, Yeah, okay. that was mm -hmm. in Langenwang. All right. And uh, when they left, everybody was, well, matter of fact, they thought the French and the Americans going to come to war with each other because there was supposed to be an American zone and the French went there first. Mm -hmm. But they, they finally left and the Americans came in. Mm -hmm. And they were really nice. I, gotta yeah. say, I used to say, oh, we, they put a family into our house when the uh, Dependents were allowed over, and the husband and wife and the kids, they were just a nice, and I used to pray to God, oh my God, I wish I could live like that. And God, I heard, to my, heard my prayers, and here I am. Today, I met my husband, I said, oh my God, he's so nice. Uh -huh. I wasn't used to men being that nice. And when did the Americans come? They came in 1945. Okay. We had the French first, mm -hmm. and then the, uh, well, the, like I said, the Moroccans under French. Uh -huh. The matter of fact, De Gaulle came too. De Gaulle? Yeah, he was in the military mm -hmm. then. And the, uh, did you see De Gaulle? Yeah, it was, our house was right next to the main road. Uh huh. That was the first house in the town. Mm hmm. And you, you see it in the other picture. Yeah. And uh, we were scared to death. Mm -hmm. We peeked out of a window and they had somebody, they told everybody, don't let anybody shoot because once you the, the uh, Hitler youth, they were up to shoot. So nobody shot at anybody, so he's on top of the tank, mm -hmm. and he had a guy walking next to the tank with a goat. That was their symbol. With a goat? With a goat, yeah. That was their, <laughs> the mil their, their squadron symbol, I guess. Oh, like a mascot? A mascot, yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was, that I remember. But scared wow. to death. Uh -huh. So you meet Hitler and see de Gaulle. I met a lot of people oh. in my lifetime. <laughs> So it was the end of the war. What was the, the mood uh, in your part of uh, Germany when you find out that the Germans lost? 
Well, it, by then, people were convinced that was no good the way the war was. It, mm -hmm. it had to change. Because before that, before, uh, all the, before they invaded, you were not supposed to listen to any foreign radio. Mm -hmm. If you listened to a foreign radio, you got taken to right. a concentration uh -huh. camp. So when he listened to the foreign radio, we had to go outside and see, make sure that nobody is around the house uh -huh. listening. And was the radio your main mode of? Uh, it was the BBC, BBC, the BBC of England. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that's how they found out. And we used mm -hmm. to hear over the German Reich, it's not an enemy plane as the bombs are dropping down. You know, it's, that that was the German station. But mm -hmm. when you listen to the BBC, it was different. Right. And did you ever um, go to a movie every once in a while? Or I was not allowed to go to a movie. Really? My sister and I snuck one Sunday. Mm -hmm. We snuck in the movies and we saw people in there that came from the town. Because mm -hmm. the movie was in the next town over. Yeah. And uh, got, got three dirty. I said, honey, we got to go. We got to go. Just sitting over there. They're going to go home and tell, tell our foster parents we're in the movie. So we maybe saw half the movie. Okay. That's the only movie we saw till I left, really. So, at War's End, your foster father was a member of the Nazi party. What happened to him afterwards? Really nothing, because uh -huh. by the time the war was over, he helped. Uh, we had a, a concentration camp maybe 10 minutes away from us. Really? And he was really nice to them. Uh huh. And they came because we had the pigs. He got all the, the slop from the, from the, you know, when he cooked potato peels, not, uh -huh. I used to have to pull those big, big wagons. The wagons were as long as from here to there. Uh-huh. The big wagons. And uh, when they, so they had uh, workers come in to help. Mm -hmm. And the SS would be in the, in, with the dogs inside the kitchen eating, having coffee and cake. And then we, we snuck some food out to them. So after the war, mm -hmm. they were nice to us. Yes. Yeah. We helped them. Uh -huh. But before that, I'd say about a year before that, uh, he was all Nazi. Oh my God, Nazi pilled pictures all over. All of a sudden, he disappeared. I wonder why. <laughs> I had to hide some in the hay, in the hay haystack. Uh huh. So uh, there was you knew about the concentration camp ten minutes away. Yeah, uh, but there was no killing there. Yeah. Uh, what did you know? Who was in the concentration camp? Jews or there Germans? was there was Belgians in there. Matter of fact, we became good friends with a Belgian. One was a teacher, uh -huh. and one owned a restaurant in Brussels, Belgium. Uh huh. And they stood with us till they were ready to go home. And uh, then there was another one, Theo von Asche. He stood. I guess he was helping the Germans in Belgium, mm -hmm. so he didn't want to go back. So he stood there, I would say maybe four years mm -hmm. before he went back because he wanted to. And they locked him up for six months, that was it. Okay. And he came back. So this is now just after the war. Are you still in the Alps or are you back in? Oh, I'm still in the Alps. Still in I'm the in Alps. I'm in the Alps till I, till I was 21. Okay. And you still had to deal with him. <laughs> yeah, I had to deal with him. But you know, it was so beautiful there. Mm -hmm. I used to look out the window and say, what a beautiful. It, now when I go back, I said that's a place that Walt Disney put there. It's going to get torn down. It, that's how gorgeous it is there. Uh huh. So you continue to live with the foster father until the age of twenty-one. Tell us what happened at the age of twenty-one. I just had it. Mm -hmm. She was so nasty. We had guests there that came every winter to ski. And one, the Dr. Miller and his wife, they came yearly, and they were so kind to me. The doctor had lost his leg, but he still skied with one leg, so did his wife. Mm -hmm. So I used to go skiing with them on Sunday afternoons, mm -hmm. but I had to be back at 5 o'clock because the pigs and the goats and everything, the right, chickens had right. to be taken mm -hmm. care of. And I finally had, she was so nasty. Oh my God, she was so nasty. I couldn't, my sister was gone already. Mm -hmm. She left at 18. She told him, she said, he said something, and he, he was going to hit her, and she goes, he started coming up the stairs. He had a wooden lake also. He lost the half of his lake when he built the house. Uh -huh. A thing of uh, bricks, knock his lake off. So, but going down the stairs, he was faster than we were. But going up the stairs, he was slower. So he started coming up the stairs, and my sister goes, you stay down there, or I'm going to tell mother everything. She said, he turned around. He never spoke to her again. Mm -hmm. So shortly after that, she left. 
And it was so nice. We never got paid. We never got a penny money. Mm -hmm. We used to get money from the guests. She would take it. She goes, I'll pay. We'll keep it for you. But I never saw mm -hmm. it again. I mean, the money that we came there, because after the war, the, the money was changed. Uh -huh. We came with quite a bit of money. Right. We had it in a, a what do you call now, a, a savings book. Mm -hmm. And uh, she took that and she had the money changed. It, there was our name in there. Mm -hmm. And we never saw the money again. Mm. From the First Communion and Confirmation, got a beautiful necklace, made a black cross and diamonds in it. Aufheben was her famous, famous word, we keep, we'll keep it for you. Mm -hmm. We never saw it again. <sighs> Things guests gave us, we never saw it again. So anyway, when I finally had it, she was very nasty. We were sitting in the living room. We had the tile stove that goes from here to there, goes all the way up. Uh -huh. And uh, she started to meet, she was dumb too, but you know, sometimes she couldn't say anything because I sort of respected her, but mm -hmm. didn't respect her. I think in a fearful way I respected her. And she just said something that was so demeaning that I said, that's it, I'm leaving. I left with the clothes I had on my back and my pocket, I didn't take nothing, absolutely nothing. I had 100 marks mm -hmm. because I was gonna get a pair of shoes made. Right. I had gotten those because I sold them. He, finally he let me have every pig once he sold it, the little ones. Mm -hmm. I got 100 marks and that's the only money I had. Mm -hmm. And I had ordered a pair of shoes that they were making for me. I said, the helmet, the shoes, I'm, I'm going. She begged me to stay. She started pulling out all kinds of jewelry and stuff. I'll give you all this, I get, I get no. Mm. I think if I had stuck another week, I would have gone crazy. Uh -huh. That's how bad it was. Wow. She would belittle you for the least little thing. She would slap you for the least little thing. She beat my sister. And I, finally, when I got a little older, I was, I was strong. Mm -hmm. I was able to pull her away. I said, don't you touch her again. Because my sister, every time there was a little noise, she would go like this. She would, you know, the fighters, when they get punched drunk, that's mm -hmm. how she was, because she always got slapped across the head. So after that, she didn't touch her anymore. Because she, as you can mm -hmm. tell in the picture, she was always smaller than me. Right. Okay, so you're 21 years old, 100 marks in your pocketbook. What happened I then? I went to the train station, bought a ticket to Kaiserslautern, where my sister, she was married by then to an American. Mm -hmm. and she had a little boy. I went to see her, and you know, halfway down, I've, I always felt sorry for them because they didn't have anybody. Mm -hmm. Halfway on the train, I said, you got enough money to get back now if you want to. You got enough money. Finally, got, I got to Stuttgart. I said, well, now I can't go back. I don't have any, <laughs> enough money to go back. Mm -hmm. so, that was it. But then, that's how dumb I was. I, I'm a softy. I always feel bad for people. Mm -hmm. And I've, I got a telegram. Mother badly burned. Return immediately. And me, like a dummy, I went back. I felt sorry for them because they didn't have anybody. Uh -huh. and they couldn't do all the work. 14 rooms, big breakfast for 14, you know, right. double rooms. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went back. Well, it was fine the first week. Mm -hmm. It was fine the second week. The third week, I said, I had it. Mm -hmm. I said, you're not that badly burned. You can do your own, own job. And I left. Because but then I had money. I worked when I was at my sister's. Okay. And I got paid. <laughs> it was nice. All right. So tell us what happened the second time you left. <laughs> the second time I left, I went back to Kaiserslautern to my sister, and I got a job working for the Americans as, as mm -hmm. a housekeeper. Mm -hmm. And um, shortly after that, I met my husband. And here we go. <laughs> oh my God, we're still in love after 57 years. Mm -hmm. And tell us a little bit about your husband. First of all, his name. His name is Louis Albert. Louis Albert. He was born in Wellesley. Really? Yeah, on Oak Street. His mother and father were Italian. They both came over here when they were, my father-in-law was 18 when he came. Uh -huh. My mother-in-law was nine. Yeah. And they loved America, and so do I. Okay. So you met, uh, and he was in the Air Force. Air Force, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what was he doing in the Air Force? He was, uh, Recon tech, mm -hmm. that, you know, go. Uh, you had to be, you had to be a secret clearance mm -hmm. by the FBI and all this stuff. Right. So. Uh -huh. just and uh, take that back. We fell in love. Uh huh. And what year was this? 
That was in 1954. 1954, okay. And we married in 1955. Where were you married? In Germany, the first marriage. Uh -huh. We just had a, a justice of the peace. Okay. Because I wanted, he wanted to be here in the States, have his mother and father there to get mm -hmm. married in church. Okay. But I had a little baby by the time I came over here, my first child. So tell us what it was like to come to America. Well, to come to America, the German houses are all big houses, brick houses, and it's, mm -hmm. you don't see little houses. When I, right. to, mm -hmm. to begin with, what I didn't like, you saw the, sh the, the windows were all covered with shades. Mm -hmm. In Germany, it's all nice curtains, nice sparkly windows. I said, oh my God, what I'm getting into. That's how I'm sat in the, in the taxi. Mm -hmm. Him, my husband and his uncle picked me up, and uh, I'm sitting there. And, Nervous as anything, and a pair of nice high heels, and I'm going like that. I broke the heels. I'm hobbling in the house, <laughs> one heel on, one heel off, and I, we drive in the driveway. I said, "Oh my God, is that a garden house?" They have a cape house, mm -hmm. and it looked like a garden house. That's what the Germans they build a little garden house. Right. But the, in the back, the house went way up. Once I got in, I said, "Oh, it's pretty nice. Nice big kitchen. The kitchen was a little bit bigger than this." Mm -hmm. And the living room was about a little bit bigger than this, so, so it's not bad. Then okay. I saw the bedrooms, so it's not bad at all. Nice bathrooms. And these, this was in Wellesley? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And my in-laws were really, they wanted him to marry an Italian girl. Mm -hmm. But once he got to know me, they were happy to. My mother-in-law was like my best friend. And, and after what you said, dealt with with the foster mother, that must have been a big improvement. And not having a mother, that's, you know. Mm -hmm. And she was good with my kids, right, right? Because she sent me things to Germany when Judy was born. Mm -hmm. And oh my God, Judy was their, own, their first grandchild. Oh. Was like treated like a. Mm -hmm. When we left, my husband was stationed in Washington, D.C. then, so mm -hmm. we went to Washington, D.C. I went all over. Yeah. So tell us what Washington, D.C. was like back in the 50s. Washington, D.C. was nice. It wasn't as crazy as it is now. Mm -hmm. We lived in an apartment complex in a two-bedroom apartment. We mm -hmm. paid $125 a month. And it was a nice apartment. Uh huh. And where were the other ports of call? Uh, the next one was Italy. Okay. I loved Italy. What, uh, what I part loved of Italy? Vicenza, and that's exactly between Verona and uh, uh, Venice. Okay. Smack dab in the middle. Mm -hmm. And oh, I loved it there. I learned Italian while I was there in two months. I had, I had an Italian maid. Mm -hmm. It was fun. We were there for four years. Mm -hmm. And it was a NATO base. And my husband didn't speak Italian. Born, now, an Italian mother and father, he would understand, but he didn't speak it right. Mm. And from Italy, we came to Bedford, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. We stood here almost four years. Okay. Then we went to Okinawa. Oh boy. <laughs> it was fun. And after that, after ok o Okinawa was strange. They uh -huh. had all these strange bugs. My son got bitten by a bug, he almost died. Oh dear. And for six years, the Thing will come back. They couldn't figure out what it was. Mm -hmm. Finally, here at uh, Leonard Moore's Hospital, Dr. Burke, I don't know whether you remember him. Um, yeah, I think I do. Yeah, he's the one that took care of Jeffrey. He was kind of shy. Mm -hmm. I stood on one side, he wouldn't come close to you. He stood on the other side. But his son, mm -hmm. my son's best friend to this day. Mm -hmm. Whatever he did, he never got sick again. Interesting. Mm. So, Okinawa, and then after that, after after Natick, I didn't go back to Okinawa. My husband went, but I didn't want to go back there. Mm -hmm. There were just too, too many bugs there. Okay, and this was around the 1960s now? Or? That's uh, 60s, yeah. 60s, okay. He went back in 1969. Okay. We went, we went there in 1967. Uh-huh. And uh, came back. No, we came back. Yeah, yeah, we came mm -hmm. back in, in 67. 64, we went from 64 from Italy to Bedford. We only stood there two years, okay, mm -hmm. and then we went to Okinawa. Okay. And uh, the kids loved it because they had riding mm -hmm. and golf clubs and everything there, but there's just too many, many bugs there and on right. the beach too. It was, uh -huh. So I said, I'm not coming, Lou. You have to go by yourself. Mm -hmm. And my kids were going to school here in Natick. We lived in Natick then. Mm -hmm. 
You want a silk, silk mercury sauces? You must know silk. Oh, yes. He's, he, he, he played at my daughter's wedding, the best <laughs> wedding I ever went to. Oh. He never stopped playing. Uh -huh. We used to go to the Sons of Italy on Saturdays. He played mm -hmm. him and his sons. Yeah. I went to his funeral. Yeah. Seeing them there, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. So tell us what Natick was like in the mid to late 60s. In the 60s? Yeah. Natick was fun. Mm -hmm. Natick wasn't as stuck up as, as Wellesley. They didn't look down at you when you, if you, you know, uh -huh. were not there. Mm -hmm. And when did your husband retire from the Air Force? 72. 72. He went in at 50, 1952 and retired at 72. Mm -hmm. And what was his rank? Staff Sergeant. Okay. In those days he didn't get promoted, although it was the Vietnam War. And, yeah. Know. So, uh, do you remember what his feelings were about the Vietnam War? Well, he, he said the French were smart, they got out, mm -hmm. and here we got in and, you know, we got all these boys killed, and those poor guys that came back. I used to go to the hospital there. It was uh -huh. the first, when he came back from Vietnam, they went straight to the hospital in uh, Okinawa. Mm -hmm. I used to go to see those boys, bring them cakes and, you know, whatever. Mm. It was terrible to see. What I saw, it was horrible. Wow. It's just horrible. Mm -hmm. So no. I didn't think, I, I felt bad for the boys that fought there and mm -hmm. weren't recognized. Okay. In the meantime, uh, are you an American citizen? Do you? Of course. And when did, when did you be officially become an American citizen? Officially in 1959. 1959. And you took the, the oath and everything? I was by myself. Oh. And what was that? What did that feel like? That was great, but I couldn't. Like I said, I, p I pick up languages real quick. Mm -hmm. And the uh, judge asked me, uh, can you write Amer English? I said, yes. He says, write the flag is red, white, and blue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that was the easiest <laughs> sentence to write. <laughs> and I knew every congressman, you know, that uh -huh. there, it was, mm -hmm. <laughs> he was amazed. He says, how did you learn all that? I said, well, I've been here. I was living in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to Italy. Yeah. But I had to, had to get top secret clearance before we could ah, go there. Okay. That's why I had to become a citizen. Mm -hmm. So, I and I understand your son was part of the Natick High football team? Oh yeah. Tell, tell oh, yeah. us about the... I'm so proud of him. Yeah. He played on the team. Uh -huh. He had never been defeated, 38th straight. So you remember that era? I do indeed, I do yeah. indeed. And when he went to college, mm -hmm. his first football game there, he lost. He lost. Aww. He came home. He wouldn't talk for two days. I said, Jeff, you have to learn to lose too. You can't <laughs> always win. So after two days, he sort of accepted it. What position did he play? He was a uh, defensive, defensive okay. end. Ah. Matter of fact, he broke both ankles the last game. Oh, good heavens. He, well, he broke one when he played. Mm -hmm. In Natick, but when they played at the, the, the Thanksgiving game in Framingham, he broke the other one. Oh. So he, he's hobbling. During the week on one foot, he had one of those casts on the yep. halfway. Mm -hmm. And we said, Ron Ketty's questionable, mm -hmm. but Ron Ketty played, wow. took the cast off and played. But then when he hobbled off the foot, off the, off uh -huh. the, off the field on Thanksgiving, day, I said, oh, oh, Jeff, we better go to the hospital. Hmm. So you had three children. Now, did any of the children or grandchildren go into the military? No. No. My son works for IBM. Uh huh. He went to Curry College, mm -hmm. and he worked during high school. He worked during, co when he, during college. When he went to Curry College, he worked for Grossman's. When he got his degree there, when he got his uh, bachelor's, mm -hmm. he went part-time to Framingham State to get his master's. And then he worked first for Sun Life. Mm -hmm. And for MetLife, and for MetLife, he he was going to Cognos, but uh, one of the big shots from New York flew in and said he already had given him a going away party. Mm -hmm. He asked him to say whatever he offer you. He was going to go to mm -hmm. to no, he was going to MetLife then. Right. And uh, he said whatever he pay you. No, for MetLife to Cognos, okay, whatever okay. you pay mm -hmm. you, I, I match and I give you a couple mm -hmm. of thousand above. So he decided to stay, but 
the bad part is that he'd be home, mm -hmm. four o'clock in the morning, the phone rings from India, that's when you get, get the report, because it's different time. So he mm -hmm. got into Cog Cognos, his brother-in-law worked there, and Cognos got bought by IBM. Now he works for it? Mm -hmm. Now he works for IBM, he has four mm -hmm. divisions under him. Okay. He's doing and really I just well. wanted to... Uh, that's okay. my son. That is your son. That's my son, my sister, and oh, my three grandchildren. Okay. <laughs> and that was taken last year again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is the town, the whole town. That is your hometown. That's my, well, where mm -hmm. I grew up okay. in, the, in the mountains. But look how beautiful that is. It is. It's absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And I go back and say, oh my God, it's so beautiful. So, and you have been back to Germany. Yeah, I went back four times. Uh huh. I wanted to go this summer. Yeah. But then my husband got so sick, he was in a hospital a month, in a nursing home for a month, mm -hmm. and he can't walk now, so uh -huh. he falls easy, so I couldn't go. In the meantime, one of my best friends, who I call my aunt over there, was very good to us. Mm -hmm. My father stood with her before he died. She has a nursing home and assistant living. Mm -hmm. She had, she's, she passed now. Yeah. And. She did everything for him, I mean, absolutely everything. And she wasn't related to us. When mm -hmm. we went over to see him, she paid for everything. So she adopted us like her children. Right, and this was this is that, your father before, shortly before he died. Yeah. And uh, he was a tailor. Yeah, master tailor. Mm -hmm. Over there you have to be in practice first, then you mm -hmm. then you sew for three years, then they gave you a master. Uh -huh. He looks so skinny here. Yeah. So, a, but uh, you had contact with him uh, after the war. I and met stuff. him in nine, in twenty in, in, when I was twenty seven years old. Uh huh. And when I came, he looked. I, I came by myself. And my two. I only had two children then. Right. He started crying. Oh my God! He started crying. Mm -hmm. Then he pulled out this picture, of this this picture here. I had it enlarged. Uh -huh. He had that in his pocket, jacket pocket, all these years. Mm -hmm. And he and pulled this. that out and he gave it to me. And this is you and your and twin? My twin sister, yeah. We were two years old here. Uh huh. And that was shortly before your mother died? Yeah. Wow. That was another nightmare. He had, had us there mm -hmm. when she died in the, in the hospital. Mm -hmm. We were little. And he took us to the funeral. Mm -hmm. And you know, with little kids, you shouldn't take little kids to the funeral. Mm -hmm. Two days after they buried her, my sister and I said, we gotta get mom out of there. I didn't know that till, you don't remember things when, I was, when you're two years old, till mm -hmm. I went back and met my cousins and my uncles. He couldn't find us. Then the neighbors said, oh, we saw him walking up towards the cemetery. So we get to the cemetery, here we are, we're trying to dig her up. I could never go to a wake till one of my neighbors died, who he died in my arms. Uh -huh. After I went, that's the first wake I went to. I don't know whether you know Peggy Green. Mm, sorry. Her uh, brother-in-law used to be on the native, native fire department. Uh -huh. And uh, John worked, I think, for a package store downtown. Mm -hmm. But John died in my arms, and I went to his wake. And after that, I started going to wakes. I couldn't go before. Right. Like, you know, that's very traumatic for a child. Mm -hmm. So you can tell how happy we are in this picture. Mm -hmm. Here we're still in the home right. in Essen, uh -huh. where we were really nice. And here is where the, the, the faces. And the difference, yes, yeah, the difference was about what, a couple of years? Two years, Two yeah. Two years. There's a big difference. Mm -hmm. And so your sister's still around? In German? Uh -huh. No, she's in, in Michigan, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Really? Mm -hmm. We both okay. came over here. Mm -hmm. Now, Helene, is there anything you want to say? Uh, anything else about? Uh, well, it's the only thing I can tell you. I'm so happy to come to this country mm -hmm. because people here are so different. If somebody abused a child and you told somebody, they would do something. In that little town, nobody did anything. Mm -hmm. We pulled, pulled wagons, the hay wagons that a tractor should pull. Mm -hmm. I pulled, my sister pushed, and he would ride the bike, he had one leg, he'd pedal me one leg, push faster, pull faster, pull harder. But all my insides, when you're little, all my insides were ruined. I had to have a hysterectomy and the doctors in Plattsburgh, could, oh, I was in Plattsburgh, New York too, I forgot about that. Okay. <laughs> that was in 19... Mm -hmm. 
1996, 69, mm -hmm. 69. Right. And I got very sick and I was in the hospital almost like my bladder got ruined. Uh -huh. And he said, and I told him our story. He said, oh my God, no kid should be having to do that. Mm. I can't even begin to tell you things. I just couldn't. Yes. Well, Helene, is there anything else before we wrap up this interview? I did, well, what I can tell you, I think I told you. Okay. Well, Helene Behrens Ronchetti, we thank you so much for participating in the Native Veterans Oral History no, Project. You're welcome. Okay. You're welcome.